What does Ash Wednesday teach you? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. May 18, 1980. You might remember that on that day, there was an incredible explosion which was estimated at 500 times more powerful than the force of the atomic bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. This explosion was so powerful that it ripped 1,200 feet off the top of a 9,700-foot volcano known as Mount St. Helens. Although the mountain had been dormant for 123 years, within minutes, incredible power was unleashed. Thousands of tons of volcanic ash were thrust into the atmosphere. The cloud of ash literally turned day into night in the surrounding communities. They were virtually immobilized as from 4 to 6 inches of the powdery substance fell like a winter snowstorm. What was once considered prime hunting and fishing country was decimated. Sports Illustrator reported that 26 lakes, 154 miles of trout streams, and 195 square miles of wildlife habitat were destroyed. Powerful. But Mount St. Helens was not powerful compared to another volcano which erupted in 1883. Mount Krakatoa in Indonesia erupted with a force that was equal to 30 hydrogen bombs. The power from Mount St. Helens was estimated at 500 atomic bombs. One hydrogen bomb is equal to 1,000 atomic bombs. So Mount Krakatoa was equal to 30,000 atomic bombs. Mount Krakatoa was 60 times more powerful than Mount St. Helens. During the eruption of Mount Krakatoa, tidal waves killed 36,000 people in Java and Sumatra, and a cloud of ash cooled the Earth's climate for almost two years. Today is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season. The Gospel reading reminds us that we must do good not to be recognized, but to atone for our sins and be made right with God. In the English language, Lent is the past tense of the word Lent. We are reminded today that all that we possess, our talents, our treasures, the time we have, are not really ours but God's. As I emerged from the Santo Niño Church in Mactan, Cebu last night, having just observed the priest setting fire on the dried palms brought by the parishioners, in front of the altar to turn them into ashes for today's imposition, someone behind me uttered these words in his native Cebuano dialect, From dust we came, and from dust we will return. Indeed, we have nothing to boast of. When we practice the disciplines of Lent and holiness, almsgiving, prayer, and fasting, we must do so without fanfare, in secret and with sincerity of heart. Giving to the poor without letting others know shows our genuine brotherhood with them who are the favorites of our Lord. Prayer illumines our purposes in life and directs us to the path our Lord sets for us with resolve and determination. Fasting strips us of our attachments, keeps us grounded, and leaves us empty for the Spirit to dwell in us, making us confident and assured of our promised future. When we lean on these pillars of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we know we are on solid spiritual ground. We can never be rocked, shocked, and mocked, by the problems we face, we are never unsettled by the unexpected, nor do we panic in crisis moments of seismic proportions. And when tragedy strikes, we will always rise from the ashes, covered in the love of God, washed by His gentle rain of mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, touch my heart and teach my mind to walk in humility and wisdom to be perceptive of your love and mercy, and to live in holiness beginning today. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. There in the Father, and with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.